We read here, now even the first covenant had regulations of divine worship in the earthly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle prepared, the outer one in which were the lampstand and the table and the sacred bread. This is called the holy place. And behind the second veil, there was a tabernacle which is called the holy of holies. Having a golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden jar holding the manna and Aaron's rod which budded, and the tables of the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat, but of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things have been thus prepared, the priests are continually entering the outer tabernacle, performing the divine worship, but into the second only the high priest enters once a year, not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit is signifying this, that the way into the holy place has not yet been disclosed, while the outer tabernacle is still standing, which is a symbol for the time then present, according to which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make the worshipper perfect in conscience since they relate only to food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until a time of reformation. Now here again, the apostle is trying to bring out the difference in the new covenant compared to the system of worship under the old covenant. In chapter 8, the contrast was drawn between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and it was pointed out how the New Covenant was better than the Old Covenant. How was it better in this sense that we can now have victory over sin and not just forgiveness? And also, we can know God personally, intimately, without any other human being coming between us and Him. There is one God and one mediator only now between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We can go directly to God through Jesus Christ. From chapter 9, verse 1 onwards, right on to verse 18 of chapter 10, the contrast is drawn between the better worship that is ours under the new episode, and then in chapter 10, verses 19 to 25, he explains a little more about the better fellowship that we are offered under the new covenant where we can enter into the most holy place. And in chapter 9, verses 1 to 10, he says about the form of divine worship under the old covenant. They had a tabernacle, and in the tent of the tabernacle, there were two parts. The tabernacle itself consisted of three parts. One was the outer court, in which the altar and the laver were kept, and then the tent, which was divided into two parts. The first part of the tent was called the holy place, in which, which was taken into the most holy place on the Day of Atonement, but which was normally in the holy place. And into this holy place, the priests could enter but between the holy place and the most holy place was hanging what is known as the veil. And into the most holy place only the high priest could enter, as it says in verse 7, once a year. And thereby the Holy Spirit was signifying that the way into the most holy place was not yet open. This was the symbolism of the old covenant tabernacle with the veil hanging there, the thick veil, and on that veil were carved the cherubims, the same cherubims that stood outside the Garden of Eden with the flaming sword, pointing out that man cannot enter into the most holy place. Into the very presence of God, man cannot enter because it is man from coming near it. This is what he explains later on, how Jesus has gone into the most holy place through rending that veil, 
We shall come to that later in our study of Hebrews. But looking at Hebrews 9 verses 1, and 1 to 10. Now, just to look briefly at the symbolism of the Old Testament form of worship. We read there, there was a tabernacle, verse 2. And when God told Moses to make that tabernacle, these are the words that he told him. In Exodus and chapter 25, Exodus 25 and verse 8, God said to Moses, Let them construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them according to all that I am going to show you. The purpose of the tabernacle was for God to dwell in the midst of his people. God was to dwell in the midst of his people. And that tabernacle was a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning whom it is written in Matthew chapter 1 that his name was Emmanuel, God with us, God dwelling with us. And we read in John chapter 1 verse 14, wrestled among us. The Word, the Word who was God, Jesus Christ, came and pitched his tent among us as a man. This is the meaning of that verse. And so the Old Testament tabernacle was primarily a picture of Christ, God manifest in the flesh. But also, it is a picture of the New Testament church and of the New Testament Christian today. God dwells by his Spirit in the heart of the Christian and in the church. You are the temple of God, it says in 1 Corinthians 3, and God dwells in you. Yes, the Spirit of God dwells in us. And we read here in Hebrews 9, verse 2, there was a tabernacle prepared, which was a picture of God's dwelling place. And in that tabernacle, the tent of it, in the holy place, which is called here the outer one, the first one, there was the lampstand, the table, and the sacred bread on the table. And behind the second veil, that is the veil that prevented people from going into the most holy place, was the most holy place which contained the golden altar of incense taken in from the holy place on the day of atonement into the most holy place, and the ark of the covenant which was permanently in the most holy place containing the golden jar holding manna, Aaron's rod which budded in the tables of the covenant. All these have a symbolism and above it were the cherubim of glory. The cherubims stand for guarding God's holiness. Now, it's not very important for us to see the symbolism of all this, but they pointed to a day when all these things would be true in man's experience. When the law which was kept in the Ark of the Covenant would now be put into man, God's law written in man's heart and mind. And there would be fruitfulness from death, symbolized by Aaron's rod which budded, which was kept in the Ark of the Covenant. And the jar holding manna symbolizes God's continuous provision for people that will be true under the new covenant. Man not living by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. There's symbolism in all this. But above all, the symbolism was in the veil which hindered man from entering into God's presence. It is that veil which has been rent so that we can enter into the most holy place today because of the new and living way that Jesus has made for us.